sometimes town planners have got an amazing ability to frame a picture for me. On this road here, I've got these rows of buildings on either side and they lead me through to this centre point, this amazing bit of architecture at the far end, this skyscraper with some amazing angles, interesting colours and a chunk cut out the middle of it. So let's see if I can use these buildings to frame that into a pleasing shot. I'm stood right, not in the middle of the road, but right on the edge of the pavement here, where this building, this really interesting tall building is right in the middle of the shot. There's an equal amount of sky on either side between these residential buildings. Now, I can't go any closer to it. The thing that I don't like is that I have a lot of road at the bottom here, but if I go much closer, then the composition starts to be ruined a little bit by all of the trees. So I've got to be here. So I'm going to use the optical zoom lens on this camera. There we go. So there's less road now and I really get the sense of depth and my eyes are following the lines of these residential buildings and taking me to this skyscraper at the end. That's much more like it. Now because I'm on a zoom lens now, it gets very, very wobbly. You've got to be even more stable. There's no lamp posts here for me to lean against. So I'm just going to dig my elbows right into my side. There we go, to stabilise that. Other things, grid lines, turn on your grid lines because that's going to make sure, as with all architecture, urban landscapes especially, if you need something to be vertical, make sure it's vertical. So take pains there. And the other thing, because I'm shooting up, I've got the darks of the buildings and I've got the bright sky, turn on HDR. High dynamic range just means that I'm going to stand the best chance of getting as much of the darks and the lights into the shot as I possibly can. Now this car is exactly what I want because while it's nice to have this urban landscape architecture thing, people are living here. Let's be patient and see if we can get a car driving past or a cyclist like this one here. There we go, just a little bit of movement. Uh, so I can hear a car's coming. Three, two, one. There we go. Now, depending upon your phone, there might be a split second delay between you pressing the shutter button and actually taking the exposure. So you might need to anticipate. There we go. Okay. Just make sure you're right in the middle. There's a car coming towards me now, which is lovely. There we go. What you can also do if your phone supports it is go into a, into a burst. So on this one here, I just press down on the shutter button and this takes a burst of 20 shots. Okay, I can just hear a cyclist, I think, or a, a bicycle coming. Here it comes. There we go. Let's see how that comes out. This was with the standard, the 1X lens, and this doesn't work for me. Way too much road not getting enough detail on what I think is my point of interest in there. So, no. Here we are with the 2X lens, and this is better. This building is more of a focal point in the image, but a bit too much sky. I've lost too much road. I've kind of lost that bit of context there. Nice timing with that vehicle going across frame, but I kind of want to meet this one in the middle a bit more. And that's what this shot here does. I've got a bit of road, bit of sky, building that I want to focus in on in the middle. I've got the movement, I've got the car coming from behind me, I've got the cyclist going across frame. That's certainly the, the one of these that works best for me. But here's something that I might do with this. Crop in a bit. So, this frame here I really, really like. Instead of having both of the buildings converging onto this skyscraper at the end. I've cropped one of them out and that's meant that this interest is on the third. This car is leading the viewer's eyes into it. This building is doing the same, leading the viewer's eyes into it. The cyclist is going off frame. It's a bit uncomfortable but I like it. And then the sky, this negative space is also leading my eye towards the skyscraper at the end. It's a great option to crop in like this although the wide shot also works quite nicely for me.